Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to shuffle cards. Have you ever had trouble shuffling cards in real life? Are you the loser that has to ask someone else to shuffle for you? Well fear not because today you will learn how to shuffle cards in Blender so you won't ever have to worry about it again. To get started with this tutorial we're first going to model the exact size of a playing card. The exact size is about 8.9 centimeters by 6.4. So what we're going to do is press N and go underneath the dimensions tab, type in 8.9 CM and then enter. And then the Y direction, we're going to go 6.4 and then CM right there. Next up, the thickness of the card is about 0.17 millimeters. So type in 0.17 millimeters and then enter. To zoom in, you can press the period key on your number pad to zoom in on the card. Now, in order to get the cards to bend for the shuffle animation, we're going to be using the simple deform modifier. In order to use that though, we're gonna need a little bit more geometry. So go into edit mode and hit control R and we're gonna add in 13 cuts. So hit 13, enter, and then right click to snap the vertices into place. We also want to bevel the edges because if you look at a playing card, you will see the corners are rounded off. So in order to do that, we're gonna press control A and apply the scale, then go into edit mode. We'll go into the edge select mode and then select all of the corners right here. So box select all the corners, just like that. You can press control B to bevel, drag it out just slightly, and then use the scroll wheel to add in a little bit more geometry. And as you can see, we now have rounded corners and it looks like a playing card. Next up, before we apply the modifiers, let's create a new material. I'm gonna go into top view and split this window right here, and then go over to the shader editor. We're gonna be using a texture, and if you want to use the same texture that I am, the link is down in the description. We're gonna be adding in an image texture, take the color, plug that into the base color, and then open this up. The texture that we'll be using is this one right here, and then you can click on open image. You can take the alpha and plug that into the alpha of the principled shader. Now, if we go back over to the UV image editor, we're gonna go into edit mode, and we can see here is our texture. At the moment, the UV map is totally messed up, so let's fix that. We'll box select the top half, press U, and go project from view. Over on the right side, we're gonna box select the entire thing, rotate it 90 degrees, and then place it on the back of the playing card right here. So scale it down and then place it right in this position. Next up, we'll go on the bottom side by pressing Control 7, Alt A to deselect, B for box select, draw a box around the bottom half, and go U, project from view, and we'll just repeat the process. Select the entire thing, rotate it around, and then place it in the top left of our screen right here on the Ace of Clubs. Finally, we're going to select the middle loop right here by holding the Alt key. I'll switch over to face select mode. Holding Alt, I will select that middle bit, press U, unwrap, and for this, we're just going to press L to select it, scale it down, and then place it right in this white section over here, right where this white card is. I only want there to be white, so place it right there and you'll be good to go. Next up, let's add in the modifiers. I'm going to press N to close off that panel and drag this over this way. And over in the modifier tab, I'm gonna click add modifier and select the simple deform right here. We're gonna select it over to the bend mode. And then for the axis, we're gonna go with the Z axis. Now currently the bend is going in the wrong direction. So we need to fix that. So we're gonna hit the R key, then X, negative 90 and then enter. And now if we go out of edit mode, we can see the bend is now working. We'll rotate this along the X by 90 degrees as well. So now we can see our rotation is now correct. The origin point is where the bend will begin and we want the origin to be on the outside edge. So to fix that, go into edit mode, select this face right here, shift S and go cursor to selected, then go out of edit mode, right click, set origin, and then select origin to 3D cursor. Now you can see the bend is going in the correct direction. Next up, we're gonna right click and go shade smooth. Then over in the modifier tab, we're gonna add in an edge split and set this above the simple deform modifier. Now I think we are ready to start animating. I'm gonna go into front view by pressing one on the number pad and I'm going to set the angle down to zero. Then I'm gonna hit I while hovering over this angle to add in a keyframe. How this is gonna work is we're gonna animate this value coming up and then it's gonna come down just like that and that is how we're gonna get the shuffle effect. We're gonna to skip to frame 20 set the angle up to a value of 80, and then hit I one more time. The position of our 
object, we want it to be about one grid unit from the center. So drag it over to the right. So it's about one grid unit. Then we're going to skip to frame 30. We're going to add in another keyframe by hitting I. We're going to skip to five frames later, and now it's going to slam down on the ground. So set the angle back down to zero and then add in another keyframe. Now that we have our animation in place, we are ready to start adding the rest of the cards. Now there is 52 cards in a single deck, so we're going to be adding 26 on this side and 26 on this side. So to do this, we're going to zoom in. We're going to name this cube at the top. We'll go 0 0.001 just so we have everything correct. And now we're going to duplicate this. I'm going to press Shift D and then right click to snap it into place. We want to move this up two times because when, whenever you shuffle cards, one card goes over the top and then another card lays on top back and forth. So we want a little bit of space in between every single card. So over in this duplicate menu, we're going to set the Z direction. We'll go 0.17 millimeters by typing MM times two and enter. Then we're also going to want to move it over to the right side because if they're in the exact position, the bend will have them pinch up at the top and that's not what we want. So over in this, we're going to set the X direction to 0.17 millimeters and enter just so they're on the right just slightly. And now what we can do is hit the shift R button and that will duplicate what we just did. So now we need to do this 26 times. So I'm going to press shift R a bunch of times over in the outliner. Make sure you're watching it until it reaches 26. One more right there. Now we have 26 cards in our deck. So now what happens is if we restart the animation and play it, it goes up and then it slams down just like that. The next step is to offset every single one of these animations. We can do this very easily with the dope sheet editor. So over in this panel, we're going to switch it over to the uh, dope sheet. If I can actually select it, select the dope sheet. And here we can see a lot of different keyframes. To make this more concise, we're going to press the minus key on our number pad while hovering over the left side, hit the minus key, then just open up the summary. And there we go. We can see this is a lot more simple. So the next step is to actually select some of the keyframes and then move them over to the right side. We're going to do this by box selecting them right there, just to the top. Actually, we only want to select this one right here. We're going to leave the cube 001, but we're going to select cube 002 and we're going to move it over two frames. So hit G, move it over two frames, and then we're just going to repeat the process going down. So press B for box select, draw a box with the middle mouse button to deselect. Oh, looks like I accidentally did it wrong. G, we'll move it over, deselect that bit right there, G, move it over, and just repeat this process going all the way down to cube 26. All right, there we go. We've now added all of the keyframes and just double check that everything looks good, which it does. And now we are ready to duplicate all of our planes and move them to the other side. I'm going to press shift S and go cursor to the center right here. So the cursor is right at the center of the world. We're going to select the button up here to change the pivot point to the 3D cursor. From there, we'll select all of them. Shift D, right click, then go R, Z, 180 and enter. Now you can see that they're on the other side, but we also need to offset the animation. So I'm going to press B for box select, draw box around all of the frames underneath and we're going to move it over by one frame. So I hit G, move it over one frame and then left click. So now what this looks like, if, it, if we go to frame 16, we'll play our animation and here is our result. All the cards are shuffling. One other problem that we have though, is if we zoom in here, you will notice that they're in the exact same position. So what we need to do is actually move this upwards. If we go to the beginning of the animation, we can see this one comes down first. So we need to make sure they're all moved up slightly. So we'll skip to the end, zoom in, press G and Z. And if you hold the shift key, you can go precise movement and we're going to go up 0.17 millimeters. If you look up at the top right there is what we want and then left click. Now that we have done that, we are ready to start moving the cards into place and separating them. We're going to close off this window. We're not going to need this anymore. And then to start out with, we're going to go into front view. I'm going to skip to frame 20 and we're going to add a location keyframe to both of these objects. So select all of them, hit I and go location. This is important later because we're going to be adding keyframes at the start and the end. So we want to make sure we have the original position safe with this keyframe. Next up, we're going to go to frame 95. 
add in another location keyframe right there. And then we're going to move them into place over 20 frames. So we're going to skip to 115 and we want the cards to come together. To do this, we'll zoom in, we'll select half of them. And one problem that we have though, is you can see they're at an angle. A really easy way to fix this is if we press the N key, if you hold the Alt key on your keyboard, select the X, set this to zero and then enter, you will see they're all completely flat, but it looks like we actually have an active object right here. So we're going to control Z that and just select one of them to be the active. So it won't have the one on the left to be active. Holding the Alt key, we will select the X, set that to zero. And there we go. You can see there's not an extra one right there. Then all we have to do is move this into the middle, right at this position, hit I and go location. We'll do the same thing on the left side. I'm going to Alt A to deselect, B for box select, draw a box around the entire thing. Select one of them to be the active object. Holding Alt, I will select the X, Alt, and then uh, zero, enter. And there we can see they are now flush up against it. Make sure you are holding the Alt key when you select the X location or it's not going to work. Then all we have to do is press G and X and then move them in into place right here. So we'll zoom in and place it right at that location. Right there looks pretty good. Then we will hit I and add in another location keyframe. So there you go. Let's go over to our uh, start of the animation. We'll play this. You can see it closes and then they come together just like that. The next step is to separate the cards so they can come together and we can have a looping animation. So what we're going to do is go into the front view. We're going to zoom in. We're going to select all of them, add in another keyframe at frame 120, I, location. Then we're going to go 20 frames later, so 140. We're going to deselect and only select half of the stack. So B for box select, draw a box around half of the stack. And to see how many you have selected, look on the bottom right. We can see here we have 24. We'll select two more, so we have 26. And then we're going to press G move it about here, hit I, location. Then we're going to go 15 frames later. Let's go to 55 right here, 155 G, and then we'll move it right at this position. We'll go into wireframe and then position it right on the floor. Right there is good, right in line. Then hit I and go location one more time. Next up, we're going to select all of these uh, objects on the left side. We're going to move them over to the left about the same distance, right about there. Hit I and add in another location uh, keyframe. Now let's see what this looks like. They come together, they separate and fall down. So that is the animation at the end, but now we need to go to the beginning and make it seamless. So we need to position all of the cards in this exact position right at the start. To do this, we're going to skip to the beginning of the animation and we're going to select half of them. Before we do that though, let's actually skip back to the end, frame 157. We're gonna select this bottom one right here. Uh, make sure the origin is on this side. We're gonna press Shift S and go cursor to select it. So now we know the exact position of this object. We can go to the start of the animation, Alt A to deselect, B for box select, and draw a box around every single one of them. We're gonna move them over to the uh, cursor right here. And we're going to use the same trick to flatten this edge. So holding Alt, I'm going to select the X and then I'm just going to click right there and that will flatten all of them. Then we'll just move them into place. We'll place them right about here or so. We want to make sure that they're lined up with the cursor and on frame one, we're going to hit the I key and add in another location keyframe. One other problem that we have though, is if we skip to the end, you can see they're completely flat, but then here they are really tall. So we need to now move all of these uh, objects down so that they're completely flat with each other. An easy way to do that is if we enable the magnetic snapping tool. Up here, we're going to set this over to the vertex mode, and then we'll box select all of them. We'll zoom in here, and then press G and just snap it to this location. You want to be careful though, because sometimes if you press G, you might accidentally snap it to this, and you can see there is two objects in the exact same position. So make sure that you go slow at this part so you don't have two objects in the exact same position. This has happened to me a couple times, so make sure you go slow at this part. Once you have finished it, you might see that all, all of our objects are in the wrong position. So what we're going to do is select them all. 
holding the Alt key on underneath the Y direction, holding Alt, select, set that to zero, enter, I, and add in a location keyframe. So now what we're gonna do is repeat that exact process for the left side. We're gonna skip to the end of the animation, select one of them, we'll zoom in here, we'll select this one right here with the origin point, Shift S, cursor to selected, so we know that exact position. We'll skip to the beginning of the animation, Alt A, then B for box select, and we'll drag it over and then place it right here. We also want to make sure that it is below because at the end of the animation, it is a little bit lower. So we'll place it right here, line it up with the cursor, and then just repeat the process. So we're going to hit I at an A location to lock that position. Then holding the Alt key, I'm going to select the X and then just left click so it will line it up with the active object and then just repeat the process by moving them down and make sure you go slow so you don't have two objects in the exact same position. And there we go, we've moved them all in the correct position. We're gonna box select all of them, hit I and add an A location keyframe. What we need to do now is select them all and then fix the Y direction. So I'm gonna press the N key. Holding the Alt key, I'm gonna select the Y, set that to zero and enter, then I location keyframe. And there we go, we've now created a seamless looping shuffle animation. We're gonna set the end frame in the timeline to 170. We'll restart and play it, and here is the result. The next step is to fix the UV map. Every single one of these cards is sharing that exact texture as you can see, the Ace of Clubs. So this part is a little bit tedious, but I don't think there is any workaround. What you need to do is select them all, go into edit mode, Press A to select everything, Alt A over in the UV image editor, and then just place them on every single one of these cards. It's a very long, annoying process, but I don't think there's any way around it. What you can do is hit the L key on your keyboard, G and X, and then move it over. We'll place it right there. One more time, Alt A to deselect, L to select only one of them, and move it over. Repeat this process for every single one of the cards. And there we go, that took way too long, but it's finally done. And now we can see here, if we restart our animation and play it, they come up and you can see all of the different cards as they fall down. One last thing that you might need to do is if we go to the end of the animation and then we skip to the beginning, you will see that this deck over here actually changes the beginning and the end. So what we need to do is actually just select that top bit. And the reason this is happening is because this is not completely uh, symmetrical. The top half is a little bit different from the bottom half. So what we need to do is go into edit mode. We will just select this part, rotate this all the way around 180 degrees, and that's all you really need to do. So now if we go to the beginning and the end, there is no transition and it looks really good. The last step is to create a scene with some lighting and then render this out into an animation. But there you have it folks, that is how you shuffle cards in Blender. I hope you learned something new from this tutorial and if you created your own animation, I would love to see it so make sure to send this to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. Subscribe for more tutorials in the future and I will see you in the next one.